Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Before I begin, like the video, put on your notification bell so that you can know when my up next video uploads. And if you like the video, come down in the comment section. Also, I'm going to need y'all to subscribe too, okay? Don't forget to subscribe, y'all. Hey everybody, welcome to my review of Love and Marriage Huntsville, the longest running reality TV show on. I feel like I've been reviewing this show for six months. But anyway, we open up with... Um, What's her name? Stormy doing a commercial for her Canvas Beauty. She has Tiffany there who's going to be a part of the commercial. Melanie walks in and all of them are excited to see each other. That You know, that fake, hey girl, hey stuff. You know how they go, right? And then this happens. I want to see you since the pool party. How are you? I'm great. Now either Mel was so excited to tell Stormy about how excited she was about her peace party and how well it went. Or was that shade? What y'all think? And then look at Tiffany's face. For real. That was really nice. Quick question. Why she ain't asked that to be a model too? I'm just asking for a friend, y'all. Anyway, Mel lets um, Stormy know that the peace party went well. It went so well that Destiny ended up calling Mel to ask her to come to her photo shoot. So Destiny, not Destiny, Stormy and... Tiffany are excited, like, oh my god, what a good gesture, oh my god. So y'all gonna be friends? Well, Tiffany got the look again. And in um, Melody's confessional, she was just like, listen, I'm tired of people thinking we gotta be friends because we cordial to somebody. She said she cut people off for a reason, but she can't be cordial. Exactly. If I ain't feeling you, I ain't rocking with you, I ain't rocking with you, but I can't be cordial if we are in a setting amongst other friends. And co-workers. So Mel goes on to tell him how she's going to Destin. She invited Martell and his mom. Tiffany's excited. She's saying it's for the kids. Which it is for the kids. But Stormy, with her deep self, wants to know, well, why did she invite, why did you invite them? Is it going to confuse the kids? Like, why? And Tiffany was like, it's for the kids. She said, I know it's for the kids, but why did Mel do it? Mel let them know she's at so much peace that nothing's bothering her right now. So to invite him and they're in a good space. It, it, it could only benefit the kids. Me, personally, he wouldn't have got no motherfucking invite, but child. Gotta do what's best for the kids, right? <laughs> Not me, though. So, Stormy asks if the kids gonna think y'all getting back together. She said, no, my kids no. My kids are, she said, although her kids are young, they're very intellectually mature. And she plus, she said she's gonna talk to them. And she's hoping that Martell don't go back into his own way. She give him an inch, he gonna take a mile. Thinking he could send her family pictures of them together and thinking they're getting back to So then we got Destiny and her cousin Demi. Um, this scene was just so, can I say it produced? Because Madani don't exist no more. They doing a collaboration. How they doing a collaboration if Madani don't exist anymore? Unless she's doing something online with her cousin. I'm not understanding. They ain't even elaborate on what it is that they trying to do. So Destiny said Demi is her cousin that has her own makeup line. She's been doing it for years. She's the person that she consulted when she decided to open up her beauty supply store. That her cousin was very honest with her about the work it takes to, you know, keep your business running and, and doing things like that. I'm saying, I'm saying the business running and all that stuff. Because obviously Destiny didn't listen, okay? She ain't listen because Madani ain't around anymore. The store anyway. So her and her cousin are working on some projects, she said. Well, hopefully it go well, because Demi, you piss her off, she's going to ruin your business. Okay, let me stop. So the cousin said, ask her how she feel about the collaboration, how she wants to be on set and want to do a 90s thing. So Destiny's like, yeah, we should throw a party. And I don't know if anybody caught this, but I caught this. Listen to what she said. Party and, and put it on them half. Party and, and put it on them half. I mean, those girls from the other night. You think they were gone? So she called them heifers, and then she called them girls from the other night. Like, Destiny, you disrespectful. Now, they call you out your name. You're going to have 10 fits, blow a gasket, and then some. Child. I don't know if she thought she was being funny or what, but pff, that's whack as hell. So they go through how Demi know everybody. Like, this your cousin, don't you... She ain't tell you she knew everybody? Like, why are we, why are we going through this? So Destiny asked her, her cousin what she thought about the peace party. She said she enjoyed it. She said that um, she burns the age and blah, 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 blah. 
So they go into the fact that sometimes her cousin goes into the fact that sometimes people don't understand how we are and they may think we being, you know, I guess bitchy. They don't understand. But what, girl, Destiny is a nasty piece of work. She a nasty piece of work. Like, ain't no excuse. Destiny show her hand on many occasions for no reason. So Destiny lets her cousin know that she and Melody talked that they had she had a photo shoot and Melody came to support. She guessed. How you guessing when you the one that invited her to come down, Destiny? So she tells the cousin that they talked. They talked about what happened in the past with their small or big fallout. But she said that they're amicable, but she'll never forget. So what happened? Can we get your side of the story? Because you the one that showed out on TV. You showed out on TV. You was acting a fool. And then you got the nerve to talk about in a friendship how people act in the opposition. That was you. You showed your ass. So the cousin said, if Mel said I love you, Destiny said she did say it. No, you asked her if she loved you. Okay? Then she answered your question. Okay? And she was like, would you be her friend? Would y'all get it back together? And Destiny was like, no. I wonder if that was the last scene she ever shot in that house. Because word on the curb is that, you know, she don't have that house anymore. But I'm just asking for a friend, though. So Mel is with the kids. They're packing for their trip to Destin. Mel goes down um, to the kitchen. Her mom is downstairs making fruit for the kids. Um, she lets her mom know that she and not only did she invite Martell, she ended up inviting Martell's mother. And um, in the, the previews, it made it look like Miss Van was upset about it. But she wasn't. She was just like, I haven't spoken to her um, since the divorce. And she said maybe they could have a conversation when they get there or whatever. So why Miss Van asked if the kids knew that they were coming? Because at the Madonna event, uh, she was told that the kids knew. So I'm confused on that part. I think maybe it's the editing. I don't know. So Miss Van said she didn't really like what Miss um, Martell's mom said about Melody. So she said maybe they could have a chance to sit down and talk about it to clear the air. Because they remember they used to take vacations together and they used to have a good time together. I think that's a good idea. Clear the air. So Marlene and uh, her son, Martell, are talking. Um, she asked Martell, is he nervous? He said he is nervous about going on a trip, but he's excited at the same time. You know, they haven't been together on a trip in a very long time. He said he know what to expect, but he don't know what to expect. He's just hoping that it's a good time. Well, if you don't be your narcissistic self, it'll be a nice trip. But if you become your narcissistic self and want things your way, then that's when y'all going to run into trouble. So anyway, he t he brings up the fact that he talked to Mar um, Marceau and Maurice about, you know, the kids and them saying that the kids are going to think they get back together. He asked his mom what he thinks, what she thinks about it. And she was like, just talk to your kids. And that's all you could do is talk to your kids. Get, keep, make sure they understand that you and Mel are not getting back together. But in his confessional, he said he want his kids to be hopeful, which means you want to get back with Mel, don't you? No, he didn't bring God into this. So Kimmy and um, Maurice are leaving her first appointment um, of her chemo treatment. I believe she said she got 19 treatments to go. Excuse me, 16 treatments of chemo, then surgery, and then radiation, and then celebration. I pray, I'm praying for you, Kimmy. I pray you beat this. Um, she said that um, she's trying not to be super negative, you know, basically wondering why me. She said that there has to be some raise. I want. I, I, I'm gonna just say it my way. Rhyme a reason of why this is happening to her. For me, you telling the story. It, like you said, you said it yourself. If you could help just one person by them looking at your story, then you've done what you need to do. So Kimmy says she had tests to make sure that it's nowhere else in her body. She says, "Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus." She also did a hereditary test to make sure that it's no preposition that she's guaranteed to get it like this is i think she said later on that this is a small chance that she would get this cancer so maury said they're trying to remain positive but he's not the medical professional and she can look at it more realistically than him so mel is on the road with the kids heading to destin she asked them um what's their favorite memories i think Boss Baby said her father wearing flower shorts. Tank was like, he liked when they ate together as a family. We ain't getting no answer from Mariah. And 
Mel said that she liked when they used to build sand castles. So the kids got excited. Mel said in her confessional that towards the end of the marriage, there was a lot of tension. The kids saw a lot of arguing. So she wants to create a balance where the kids can see their par parents together and it's a positive thing. I agree to some extent, but that ex-husband of yours, girl, he a piece of work. So Kimmy and Maurice arrive home to Kimmy's family, her mother, her father, her sisters, I guess nieces and nephews, and her son um, being there at the house. So she explains to them that, you know, she has to do chemo. I, she, I guess she explained the whole process. And then we found out that she asked her mother to move to Huntsville because she wanted to take care of her mother. And it looks like her mother's going to be taking care of her. So Jalen wants to know... Um, if him and Maurice can split the time and sit with Kimmy during her treatments. And she was like, she wanted to be a positive experience for Maurice. And I'm ho I may I'm hoping maybe they edited that because that sounds like you ain't want your son to be involved. But then she said, you know, when Maurice is tired, then you could come and sit with me through the treatments or whatever. But um, I just feel like let him be involved as much as he want to be involved. If he want to come while Maurice is there, let him come. Let him spend as much time with you as he want to spend with you. You know what I'm saying? Because no one's promised tomorrow. Yes, you fighting this, but I ain't even promised tomorrow. So d just let him spend as much time as he want with you. If he want to be a third wheel, let him be the third wheel. She said she asked Maurice, was he scared? He said no right away. And then he lets us know that he had to tell her that, you know, being a strong person. But she was like, at that moment, that quick no is what she needed. She said she worried about Maurice because he's a fixer. And he can't fix what's going on with her. She gets teary-eyed. Kind of make me teary-eyed, too. So they asked, the family asked if they told anybody. And uh, Maurice said she just told close friends. Um, they plan on telling everybody, but she wanted to get her test first just to make sure. And the conversation would be easier for her to have with everybody. So Kimmy says she a thug. She going to beat this. They going to thug it out. And she going to be good. So Mel arrives with the kids at the house. The house is beautiful. And um, everybody's excited. They go check out the rooms and everything. And as they're checking out the rooms, Martell and his mom end up coming. So the kids run downstairs. The kids are excited to see their dad. Um, and when Melody gets down there, uh, Martell has boxes of, I want to say it's crunching Munch, but he brought her caramel instead of the butter toffee. But, you know, it was the thought that counts, Mel says. And um, Mel orders food. She's ordered pizza because they got a chef coming. But tonight they going to eat pizza and wings or whatever. So she tries to order food that Martell like to eat, you know, to, to make everybody comfortable. And listen, I don't see nothing wrong with that. They've been together so long. They know each other likes and dislikes. So I don't see nothing wrong with that. And the fact that they're getting along for the kids is a good thing. Now, I must say, Martell was excited as a church girl. About to lose her virginity. No, let me stop. I'm just waiting. <laughs> but he was all giddy and everything. He gonna talk about Mel is acting. Um, he said Mel is being very authentic. Like, how else is she, she supposed to be? You know what it is? It's starting to feel like old times to him. He feel like, oh, shoot, I might be able to so get So Mel it. shows yeah. him, you know, where his mom and him are going to be sleeping. And he makes this joke about we not sleeping together. Oh, Mel made this face like, don't start no shit, okay? So he also makes a complaint that he want to sleep on the same floor as the kids. Like, boy, shut up. Like Mel said, be happy you on this free trip. Stay in Mel's room and Mel asks how you feel about the trip. Martell says everybody's energy is positive. And she says she just want to make sure, you know, things don't go left. He said everything's going to be fine. Uh -huh. So Melody proceeds right, to throw Martell. his ass out the room. He was like, I don't want to be in your room, this old Chrissy Bright room, where you want Martell in. She was like, oh, hell no, and ran behind him, pushed him out, and closed the door. Good thing, Mel. So at the end of it, he ends up sitting down talking to his mother. He looking all happy and shit. Like, he said he's excited that the kids are excited. He said this is what they're doing it for. He said it feels like old times. I'm sure it do. He said he was looking at pictures of back in the day when they came to Destin and the kids were riding bikes. Oh, Martell. Poor so you. So basically he said he, you know, wanted, he would never want to hurt his kids. Too late. You already did that. Disrespecting their mother. So stop. Okay. Stop it. He said he want the kids to be hopeful. Hell, he hopeful. Like, he keep bringing God up. Like, stop bringing God up in this when you was doing such sinful things. 
He got the nerve to say he don't want to let nothing come between them. <sighs> Too late, Martell. Coleslaw. Anyway, Mel ends up talking to the kids as they unpack it, and Tank was like, he's glad that him and his his dad and his mom are getting along. So Mel explains, like, yes, we're getting along for you guys. We want to make sure y'all comfortable and in, in being a positive space, seeing, seeing us happy. And Tank was like, he understood. And Mel made sure to reiterate that we are not getting back together. Okay, y'all, that's all I got. Like, comment, and subscribe. Come down in the comment section if you want to discuss this episode. All right, thanks again to my new subscribers. I really appreciate you guys. Peace. Mm -hmm.